Today, the national magazines recognize their popularity. Toys, t-shirts, pajamas, all bear the signature of this unique giant. And on television, one of our favorite characters lives and works among them. Well, like most children, I was fascinated from dinosaurs right from the beginning, as long as I can remember, of course, say age six or before, because dinosaurs were exotic animals, and unlike uh, the monsters you see in the monster movies, they were real. My favorite dinosaur is, I think it's the Tyrannosaurus. Absolutely, the Brontosaurus. Probably the Triceratops, because I don't like meat eaters. Brontosaurus because he's a sweet guy. <laughs> is it Tyrannosaurus Rex? Is that the one that flies? Dinosaurs are really cute, but I wouldn't want to marry one, unless he were rich. I think Fred Flintstone has it made. He has a live dinosaur for a pet. Ah, uh, <laughs> look at Dino over there. Look how he's lying there missing me. <laughs> hey, Dino. <laughs> Dino. Here, Dino, come to Daddy. Come to Daddy and show him how much you miss him. That's a good Dino. You miss your dad, Dad, don't you? Ouch! How do you like that? Then he's supposed to be man's best friend. Man's best friend and woman's. Akita! Uh -uh. Dinosaurs were part of the earliest films. From the beginning, as with this 1919 animated cartoon, Gertie the Dinosaur, the movies have represented at least some of them as gentle and as having modest appetites. The 1922 film, The Lost World, paralleled the discovery of a nest full of dinosaur eggs in the Gobi Desert in Asia. As the worldwide hunt for dinosaur bones continued, the film audience's appetite for the giant monsters on the screen increased. In the recent film Caveman, the dinosaur's appetite was satisfied by Ringo Starr. Thinking quickly, he saved actress Shelley Long by feeding the dinosaur an intoxicating herb. Fortunately, an inquisitive world's knowledge of dinosaurs did not depend on the movies. Scientists like Jack Horner transformed their childhood enthusiasm for dinosaurs into an adult discipline. Horner of Montana State University has only recently uncovered a major find of hadrosaur bones. He has made the duckbill dinosaur a household word to scientists. The reason that we know more about duckbill dinosaurs is that, is that we have found um, a small area where we have concentrations of, of nests, uh, nests containing eggs, some containing babies, uh, juveniles, and an area right nearby that, that is, so far has yielded 40 or 50 dinosaurs, but we have the remains of 10,000 individuals from a herd. So in this one area, we're able to see the life history of, of a duckbill dinosaur from the time it hatched until it was at least half grown with an adult. Horner's finds, which illustrate that some dinosaurs lived in herds and cared for their young, tell us that some dinosaurs had traits more common to warm-blooded mammals than cold-blooded reptiles. Horner's dig is near Montana's Glacier National Park. It is known as Egg Mountain. His findings confirm how the duckbills may have built their nests. Based on the evidence that these dinosaurs herded, some scientists assume that the nest building was a collaborative effort within the herd.
Like reptiles today, the nest is protected before and after the egg laying. Horner has recently discovered a fossilized egg which he believes contains the embryo of a duck-billed dinosaur. At a Montana medical center, the fossil was subjected to a CAT scan, or computerized axial tomography. A CAT scan is normally used to take a three-dimensional computerized color picture of the brain. Here, it will photograph the insides of an 80 million year old egg. The CAT scan was able to establish that an embryo is inside the fossilized egg. The embryo is identified and marked. It's a remarkable find. A duck-billed dinosaur, it's believed, laid 20 to 25 eggs in a circular pattern. Scientists don't know how long it took for the eggs to hatch, but they do know that the eggs were about 8 inches long, about the size of a grapefruit, surprisingly small for what would eventually become a 3-ton duckbill. Life for the duckbills was hazardous from the start. The Struthiomimus, an agile and fleet-footed dinosaur that resembles the modern-day ostrich, was a predator that mother duckbills feared most. The Struthiomimus, with little in the way of a defensive arsenal, no horns, no giant tail, no sharp talons, was a natural victim for other, more aggressive dinosaurs. The speed of the Struthiomimus, normally its strongest asset, occasionally failed it especially when matched by that of the Dinonychus. The Dinonychus, Greek for terrible claws, were fierce creatures that weighed less than 200 pounds. They may have traveled in hunting packs like wolves today. Their speed and their dreaded claws made them fearsome enemies. For the duckbill, survival was possible by the number of eggs originally laid. Life, the species, could continue. Dinosaur eggs hatched like those of other reptiles today. At birth, the baby dinosaur was only 12 inches long and about one and a half pounds. If he made it to adulthood, he'd grow to be 6,000 pounds. 